Hey, Mobile Mushroom family, Kara here. We're in Southern Illinois and in front of us, we've got a very special plant that needs to be respected and we wanted to bring some awareness about this plant because it's commonly cultivated to a fault. Right now, I am joined by my film crew, Wiley and Mabel over here. They're a moral support for now. And of course, Benji is behind the camera helping us out here. So here we have American ginseng. The Latin name for this is Panax quinquefolius. You'll find this plant in the summer to fall season. And it likes to grow in shaded areas, as you see here and they typically favor north-facing hillsides because they like cooler temperatures, so less sun, basically. Uh, you'll find them usually where there's not a lot of undergrowth because undergrowth typically means there's enough sunlight for small trees to grow larger. So they'll be more around ferns and mossy areas. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and tell you about this plant because this plant has been cultivated for centuries for its root because it has medicinal properties. So we've got these two plants right here in front of us and then there's also four or five plants just a couple yards up the hill. So there's American ginseng and there's also Asian ginseng. Asian ginseng has a different chemical makeup so they don't provide exactly the same medicinal qualities but they each provide a couple different medicinal qualities. More studies overall need to be done to further substantiate all of this research, but uh, as far as we know, Native Americans used ginseng root to treat headaches, fevers, infertility. People just in the past couple centuries have used it for all kinds of things like boosting their immune system. Um, a study actually proved that it did help avoid respiratory infection, so that's something to note, especially with COVID-19 going on right now, so pretty interesting. But there are laws around harvesting ginseng because like I said, it's been cultivated to a fault. There's actually even a show about ginseng hunters in Appalachian regions harvesting ginseng and getting into trouble and it's kind of a whole community that way. But here in the state of Illinois where we are right now, you need a license to both harvest and cultivate ginseng. It seems like a pretty easy process, actually. It's only about $7.50 to get that license. And the season starts the first Saturday in September and goes through the first Saturday in November. So I'll go ahead and show you this plant that we have in front of us. We've got this ginseng plant that's only got two prongs and you can actually tell the age by the amount of prongs they have. They're known for their serrated edges and this plant only has three leaves on each prong, but as it grows, it'll end up having five leaves, which that's what the plant's known for, is having five leaves that all come together into one prong and they have serrated edges. As it ages, it develops more prongs. So this one has, instead of two, three prongs, and it can get up to four or five prongs. In this time of year, you'll see that they have these bright red berries. So it's actually a lot easier to spot ginseng this time of year. The berries form where the flowers once were just a couple weeks before, and these berries hold seeds. So it's commonly said that if you're a harvester of ginseng, to be responsible about it, what you wanna do is pick an older plant, so definitely one that's at least three pronged with five leaves on each. And you also want to take these berries and kind of just dust them into the soil, spread them out so that those can create new plants around. So those are some tips for if you're harvesting ginseng. Now I will say you need to look up your local laws for ginseng harvesting, but um, the root is known to have this sort of human shape where it's typically um, one large clump with little limbs coming off of it and um, I'm going to go ahead and show you this root but then we're going to put it back in the ground because I'm not interested in harvesting this ginseng. So we actually found an even bigger patch of ginseng just a couple feet away 
with a, a more mature specimen that I'm going to show you the root of before we cover it back up. You can tell this specimen is more mature than the one we were looking at before because on each of its three prongs it has the full five leaves and they're a good size. So we can tell that this is even older than the one we were looking at before. So I'm going to find the base of the stem and gently dig around it. Okay, so now we're going to show you a close-up of the root. So this, you can tell, is about an inch long root, so it's still pretty, pretty young. But you can see that these roots have these lines, lateral lines, that go all the way down. If I keep digging, it most likely splits into a couple smaller portions of the root. Where like I was saying, a lot of times these, the shapes of these roots are compared to little human figures. So what we'll do now is just cover it up again. And if any of these berries were to have fallen off in this process, I would just take one and lightly dust it with soil and put it under some leaf litter for it to grow from the seeds that are inside of it. So we'll put this back like it was. And now you know what ginseng looks like, what the root looks like, and how best to treat it, whether or not you're harvesting. And just know to always respect plants, learn about them. And now that you know what it looks like, maybe you can appreciate it on your next walk, read some studies about the medicinal properties, look up the laws and see what it says about harvesting in your area. So thanks for joining us today, Mobile Mushroom Family. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out our Instagram and our TikTok and check out our website. We've actually got a blog post all about ginseng with some studies you can read about the medicinal properties. Thanks for watching. Thank you.